Hello, good morning. Thank you for um, coming to our workshop today. So I'm going to present this paper, Are You Hate MM? Identification of Hate Speech and Targets Using Multimodal Data from Russia-Ukraine Crisis. So let's start with what is hate speech. Hate speech is the act of conveying messages that demean individuals or groups based on attributes such as ethnicity, identity, religion, or sexual orientation. So some of the characteristics include an aggressive tone, uh, it is usually targeted, it is exclusionary, and another issue is the intent. It may intend to spread intolerance, it silences voices, and erode civil discourse. So when you are doing hate speech analysis in social media. So we would look at events um, which show the manifestation of the hate speech and also the entities which are the targets of the hate speech. Now why it is important? So you want to find out toxicity uh, in the online world. How is your digital ecosystem behaving? what would be the effect on the communities that have been mentioned in those uh, posts, impact on individuals, and whether this kind of speech could impact policy changes or not. So social media platforms have revolutionized communication, allowing users to express opinions freely. However, it also enables the spread of hate speech during political charged events, which we usually refer to as the failed promise of social media. The Russia-Ukraine crisis began on 24th Feb 2022. It is a polarized global crisis that showed polarized opinions on social media, and there was a lot of hate speech on social media. Now, research on hate speech has mostly focused on unimodal content, mainly textual content. But we have seen that social media um, has a number of um, uh, po hate speech posts that's going on in the form of images. Now, this study introduces a comprehensive multimodal data set of more than 20,000 tweets labeled for hate speech and its targets. So previous research has explored offensive and hateful content, often focusing on specific categories, such as racism or sexism. The majority of studies have been limited to text-based unimodal data. There have been some studies that have used uh, multimodal data, but they did not include subclasses in their research, uh, particularly in the context of Russia and Ukraine. So, Coming to our contributions, uh, we create and release a new large-scale data set called RU8MM, which contains 20,675 manually annotated tweets to identify hate speech and their targets during the Russian and Ukraine conflict. We conduct a preliminary analysis of the data. We have set benchmarks with several state-of-the-art textual, visual, and multimodal models. And finally, our experiment analysis shows that to address issues of hate speech on, um, uh, it is important to integrate uh, multimodal inputs. So now when we annotated the data set, there were two main tasks. Uh, to find out uh, hate speech, which you can say there are two classes, um, hate speech or no hate speech, and also detect the targets of those uh, that hate speech, which could be an individual or an organization or a community. The data set includes text and images, specifically excluding videos and non-English content to ensure consistency. And an inter-annotator agreement of uh, FLES Kappa 0.74 for hate speech classification and 0.69 for target detection shows the consistency in the annotations. Uh, overall, there were 4,222 tweets that were labeled as hate and 16,543 as non-hate um, speech um, uh, uh, tweets. And among the hate tweets, uh, 2,402 target individuals, 918 target organizations, and 902 target communities. The average character and world word count per tweet varies between different uh, categories, as you can see in this table. 
So we used a three-phase annotation schema consisting of the pilot run, the instruction revision phase, and the conflict resolution phase. Further, the comprehensive annotation guidelines were devised encompassing specific tasks, associated labels, and illustrative examples to help the annotators and ensure consistent data annotations. It was ensured that annotators possessed a broad understanding of the crisis-related matter, facilitating their comprehension of the guidelines and ensuring unbiased annotation. Now, the first task was uh, to label whether a tweet is a hate tweet or not, and hate refers to personal attacks, uh, racial or homophobic abuse, or targeting minorities. And no hate refers to objective, respectful, or informative tweets. And the second task was um, targets, to find out targets, which includes individuals, uh, uh, for example, Putin, Trump, organizations, for example, NATO, United Nations, etc., and community, which is a shared group identity like culture or ethnicity. Some examples are here. Like, now, the first one is does not show any hate, where the second one uh, uh, is an example of a hate tweet. Some more examples related to the targeted hate speech, where the first one shows um, um, an individual as a target, the second one is an organization as a target, whereas the third one shows uh, a community has been a target of hate speech. So we also conducted a very thorough exploratory uh, data analysis. We removed non-alphanumeric uh, elements, such as special characters, hyperlinks, mentions, and emojis, uh, because they can add noise to the data and potentially impact the accuracy of the subsequent analysis. Um, we showed the top 10 words for each task, ranking them based on their TF-IDF scores. And um, um, uh, we also found prominent personalities in the data, such as Putin, Trump, Biden, and um, they have been uh, consistently uh, uh, targeted in the data, and they appeared more frequently in the data. Now, overall experimental results. Um, so our results highlight the advantages of multimodal approaches demonstrating improved performance in hate speech detection and target identification compared to unimodal models. And leveraging both textual and visual information proves to be a promising approach for advancing hate speech detection during politically charged events. So if you look at this table, you can see that if you use the multimodal approach, then overall the uh, F1 scores for both hate speech and targeted hate speech, they uh, considerably improve. Multimodal um, models consistently outperform the unimodal uh, models for both type of tasks. Um, Wilbert CC demonstrates superior performance, highlighting the benefits of combining different modalities. This suggests a promising future for research in multimodal approaches to better detect hate speech instances and also identify diverse targets, including complex socio-political events. And the release of our data set um, also provides a valuable resource for further research and innovation in hate speech detection, especially during geopolitical crises, as um, uh, the Russia and Ukraine conflict. So I conclude this presentation um, uh, by saying that experiment analysis in our work highlights the importance of considering both text and image modalities for effective hate speech detection. Uh, future plans include developing new multimodal uh, models tailored for hate speech detection to deepen understanding of the text image relationship. Potential research areas uh, include expanding the data set to cover more languages and social media platforms, as well as exploring hate speech detection for specific or nuanced targets. Uh, targets. Now, there are some limitations as well. So the data set solely comprises tweets from a specific time and platform, potentially not capturing uh, hate speech in varied uh, contexts or platforms. Uh, then the annotation scheme for targets categorized broadly, possibly overlooking um, some specific and nuanced targets. The annotation of hate speech is also subjective, um, as individuals may interpret the definition and characteristics of hate speech in different ways. 
Finally, uh, the benchmark um, we established rests on a limited assortment of characteristics, thereby leaving some room for possibly um, uh, uh, for the possibility that alternative feature or structures could yield perhaps better results. Thank you.